here to help people save, earn more, invest. Hello everyone and welcome to a very special episode of The Market Talk. So I'm really excited about today's episode. I hope my co-hosts are also excited. For the first time, we will actually have three people or at least more than one talking together about investing. It's going to be so exciting. Have you guys recently checked out this documentary uh, titled Get Smart With Money? Yeah, yeah. and it's an interesting uh, documentary. Yeah. It's kind of worth my time. Completely opposite from what I watch normally. Yeah, yeah. yeah completely opposite. Uh, you know, yeah. to be honest, I, don't, I, I think I wouldn't have watched this documentary if I wasn't like in the investing sphere. Like, starting watch Korean dramas and then suddenly you open Get Smart With Money would bore me. <laughs> but now that we're in the investing journey, yeah. it, it was interesting. Yeah. yeah. So, I thought, why not today we discuss uh, what we have seen and, you know, talk a little bit about the Get Smart With Money episode. Mm. Your money will never do better than what your mindset will allow. If you have watched that documentary, you would know, and this is for our viewers that haven't watched it, the way the documentary runs is that they've invited four experts, to say mm-hmm. four like industry people who talk a lot about investing and stuff, and then to help four newbies, people who don't know how to handle their finances, and get them on the proper financial track. The way that we manage our money influences every aspect of our lives, and yet no one ever formally teaches it to us. I, I really like this uh, speaker. Her name is... Paula Pant. Paula Pant is like this uh, motivational speaker slash financial mm-hmm. person that helps you blah blah blah. And her idea is you cannot buy everything you want in the world, mm-hmm. but if you want something, there is a way to afford it so you can afford anything. So this woman, Paula Pant, in the series, she's helping a bartender with her finances. There's one line that she says in the documentary that really hit me. Spending less is the quick and easy solution, but there's a limit to how much you can food go down. There's no limit to how much you can make. Which is how she's helping that girl. So what she tells the girl is, okay, uh, you are working two jobs, very good, but it seems in your expenditures, you are actually spending too much money. So Paula Pan tells her, no, like, you got to stop all that. You have to like d- double down on your groceries. Your house, you see if you can downsize. And transport-wise, just take the bare minimum if you have to. That is the saving side. But then I really like how Paula Pan also helps her in the income earning side. So this woman is a bartender, but actually she wanted to be like a fashion designer. She's really good with arts. And so Paula tells her, you know, why don't you go out there and promote your art? And this is the type of person who can do but don't, doesn't know how to sell. So Paula gives her a really good advice. She says, okay, you like what? You like arts, right? What else do you like? You like dog walking? So she says, okay, dog walking, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go to the park. I want you to sit down there for half an hour, one hour. You see people coming with the dogs, right? Go and draw their dogs. You walk up to the person, you give that paper of that drawing of your dog. And you say, hi, uh, you know, this is my name, Tatata. I found your dog really cute. Here's a drawing I made. I hope you don't mind. But at the back, that's my name over there. I'm a professional dog Dog. walker. (laughs) Would you like to contact me if you have any services? Well, I thought that was damn smart lah. Yeah, Yeah. good marketing. Yeah, good marketing, right? Yeah. And also like, doing what she loves also. Yeah. Like at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I I don't think I would think about that. Yeah, Yeah. but yeah, Yeah. I mean, like if you you had a job, say you wanted to do be a dog walker, what would you do? You just go to the park and then you give out cards like, hey, do you want to, do you want a dog walker? Do you want a dog walker? (laughs) Like, it's a bit weird. Is so that weird, right? It's weird. Yeah. It's, weird. Yeah. it's weird, but also, like, would you have the courage to just do that? Yeah, that's something I think we, we, we kind of like, I think. Yeah. As Singaporeans or Asians, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't usually, you're not that outgoing. Yeah. Like, hey. Yeah, yeah. 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 But the drawing, the drawing part is like a good. Yes, that's like, a good opener. Yeah, a good opener. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but, 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 but what you mentioned was quite right about the food, housing, and mm. transport. I mm. think it's something that. Uh, we can link very much in Singapore. So, mm. I mean, if you look at food, uh, because from the pandemic, right? Yeah. I mean, since the pandemic, yeah. pandemic, everybody now starts to grab, starts to tap out, yeah. you know, all these kind of yeah. things. So the, so, the delivery cost adds up. Yeah. And then transport. So, I mean, I mean Singapore is a pretty good yeah. transport system, now, right? But, but you I just mean, have to like <laughs> take the, the initiative to maybe dress up a little earlier before you go to work. Yes, yeah. correct. Yeah, you're not, you're not, they were always like, Grab, Uber, you know, yeah. some people just want to buy a car. Then when you buy a car, you're not buying a realistic car, you're buying something that's beyond <laughs> what you can buy. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, I mean, these, all these are very uh, relatable or uh, relatable advice that we can apply yeah. to ourselves as yeah. well. Yeah. Especially with like the inflation rate currently also. Yeah. yeah. So the inflation rate is I think yeah. what people don't really understand. Yeah. But if you don't understand inflation, never mind. At least you can understand things are getting expensive. Yes. Yeah. That is it's, what inflation really yeah. means, right? 
which is like your KFC now at three three piece chicken meal used to cost what six seven dollars now it's eleven dollars. Yeah, it's just yeah, I never eat it. Yeah. <laughs> that was my lunch. <laughs> <laughs> oh no wonder you know the price yeah, so well. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Before know. swiping my card, oh, oh, more than ten dollars. <laughs> yeah. Piece chicken. <laughs> Uh, actually, last time they got the meal, yeah, seven dollars plus. Right? right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Coming back to the documentary, the Paula Pan girl, a woman, she actually helps the girl to earn more money. Mm. Uh, apart from the dog walking, the woman also goes out and sells her art. Yeah. And Paula Pan also then teaches her that when you sell, also don't just sell like draw one time and then sell. Draw one time, take a high quality picture, then go to the printers yes. and print. Yes. And then you can sell your drawing for like you know hundred pieces, and you don't have to work so hard. Being scalable. Scalable. Yeah, how you're able yeah, to yeah. multiply your income without multiplying the time spent on doing that thing. And, and I thought, yeah, that's, that's something that we yeah. don't usually think of yeah. when we are trying to you know, earn money. Or, yeah. yeah. Scalable and, and I think like the whole side hustle thing, uh, mm. Singaporeans don't really yeah. know how to go. Yeah. Like you see a lot of Americans doing it. Ah, yes, yes, Garage yes. sales and like sell lemonade and things like that. But <laughs> not, not really. Not really. Yeah. Yeah. Not really. Yeah. 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 Don't really want to take risks. Yeah, 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 yeah. quite risky Correct. also. Risk, yeah. uh, but I feel like maybe you can start as a side side hustle and then maybe slowly like maybe this side hustle may grow and then may slowly may become your, your actual like real yeah. actual income. Uh. Yeah. yeah. The the key takeaway from a polar pan woman was you can save as much as you want, but there's always a limit. But when it comes to earning money, there's no limit. And mm. if somebody focuses on that, which is her E, the like entrepreneurship. If you can grow your own money, then there's like financial independence. Mm. Or I like to call it post-traumatic broke syndrome. <laughs> so if you know I've been that there. That is exactly yes. what I'm feeling. For me, I was actually looking at the, the man, the coach who is uh, Tiffany. Okay. Yeah, which I think her, okay. her mentee was... Uh, oh no, I can't remember the mentee's name. But, but she, <laughs> she had a family. I remember okay. it, was, it was her, her husband and, and, and two kids. Okay. Yeah, that's right. All right. So um, the thing about Tiffany is that uh, she, she advocates proper budgeting, saving, learn how to manage your debt, learn how to earn money la, in, in that sense. Yeah. She had a credit card debt, she okay. managed to work herself out of that debt and then get to where she is right now financially free and then she's okay. going around helping people with, okay. with the same problem. Yeah. Yeah. This kind of like struck by me or called out at me was because uh, when I left my previous job, right, I was jobless for, I think, in between jobs for about four months. Okay. And then that's where, you know, you start to, some of the things that Tiffany brought up kind of mm. resonated with what I was feeling at that point in time. Okay. All right. So, uh, right from the get-go, when Tiffany sat down with this housewife, she told her, you need to ask yourself four questions. And whenever you want to buy something or whatever, you always ask yourself four questions. The first question is, do you need it? Uh, do I need it, rather? Okay. okay. Do I love it? Okay. Do I like it? And do I want it? Do I need it would refer to expenditures like your mortgage, okay. your groceries. Basically, you, you need it to survive. Yeah. All right. Then, uh, do I love it? This, this refers to a group of things where, you know, if money wasn't a problem, what okay. would I want to do? Or what would I want to experience, for example? Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Then, do I like it? This belongs to a category where, you know, think some, some things just bring you that joy for just a little while. Okay. You know, the, the joy of having a new phone. Okay new iPad or some, something like that. Okay. Yeah. So maybe that'll be under do I like it. Okay. And then do I want it is something that only brings you, you know, just temporary satisfaction. So it's even lesser than do I like it. Like okay. it is like maybe, you know, about six months or so, then, then that's about it. Okay. I, I don't know how you ex so exactly need, classify need that. Like longer duration and then the duration. Yeah, then it gets a bit <laughs> lesser and lesser. Yeah, you know, that, that, that kind of thing. So, um, so right from the get-go, this, this is what she tells the housewife yeah. with the credit card debt, you know. Before you do anything, before you buy anything, before you commit to anything, these are the questions you need to ask yourself. Yeah. So that was how uh, she tried to help this lady cut down her expenditure first. What was her credit card debt like? Uh, 65000 I'm living the fear that if my car were to break down, I don't know how we would buy another one. You know, she finished spending on one card, then she would get another card to pay off this card, you know, oh, that, that kind of thing. Okay, okay. She did mention that she was an emotional spender. Okay. So, you know, she would spend just to make herself feel better okay. as well. So, I guess okay. that's how she managed to rack up okay. such a bill. Yeah. Another thing which Tiffany shared with her was splitting the paycheck. Uh, I don't think it's something common in Singapore. I don't think we have that. Yeah. But in, so, apparently in US, what they do is that, you know, or rather Tiffany advised her to split her paycheck into different batches. Yeah. Yeah. So, the first batch that comes in, 
will be your bills for the house, like your mortgage. Mm. Then the second one will be your own personal bills. Then after that, it will, the third batch that comes in is meant for you to spend. Okay. Then the fourth one is your emergency savings. And then your last one is like meant for your dream savings. So I mean, if I try to draw a link back to Singapore, mm. you know, it could be maybe your salary goes into one main account. Okay. Mm. But every month, one, one USB. Ah, let's say one USB account. USB ah, then let's say every month you will automatically transfer some out to your spending account, maybe to an OCBC. Okay. Then you oh, only example. carry this OCBC card. You don't carry oh. the DBS card. Ah, okay, ah, then okay, maybe okay. from there, some more money go transfers out to a dream savings okay. account. So that one is like meant for you to you know when you save enough for oh, yes, this way I reward myself now. Okay. Yeah. So that was what I, I found very interesting. Yeah. Um, by splitting the money, carrying that one card, yeah. but yet at the same time, you have the flexibility right, to reward yourself right, yeah. when the time comes. Yeah. And I say that this really called out to me because when I had no job, then that's when I had to like, oh, okay, now you know, like my savings, how much do I have to portion out for mm. my fixed uh, expenses every month, you know, then my food, you, know, you have to be yeah. extra cautious about what you buy, yeah. is it expensive, yeah. things like that. And, then, and that, that's, that's why I, I felt that, oh, it really, brought me back to when I was in between jobs. You win a year of financial and investing coaching from yours truly. I'm really interested in this guy called Ross Mack. Yeah, Ross Mack yeah, in the documentary. I like that character. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Super yeah the, the S is like a dollar sign. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he's basically like a former hedge fund manager and also a YouTuber. His client is basically Tease, which is this NFL athlete. The first paycheck which he got was around $1.6 million. Mm. But like he didn't really manage his money really well. Yeah, like a, like a typical lottery winner lah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. one million total, yeah. and then spend. all yeah, spend, yeah. spend everything. Yeah. Exactly. How much did you splurge on? A couple of chains, a couple of earrings, a couple of watches. Sixty. Right now, if you would have put sixty thousand dollars into the S and P five hundred, would be one hundred and twelve thousand. Mm. So basically, Ross Mack like uh, advocates for this strategy of like dollar cost averaging into this S and P five hundred index. Okay. Yeah. So dollar cost averaging actually is like just. You know, investing like a fixed amount of money at a target security at like you know fixed intervals. Uh. So for okay. example like every month you invest like hundred dollars okay. into this like S P five hundred index. So I feel like this is like the dollar cost averaging aspect is like, a very good advice because like helps to avoid market timing. Uh. Mm. Because like, sometimes if you put like a lump sum of money into like mm. this index, like someone may buy it at like the highest price, like yeah. you really know. Okay? Yeah. Like this will in turn uh, reduce your return on investments uh, in the long run. Yeah. So Ross Mac told him Hey, you still have some like loose change. Go and put it in the stock market. Yeah, market's. yeah. Just to I mean. put like a few, uh, like maybe one thousand dollars every month into okay. the S and P five hundred index. Okay. Okay. Even Warren Buffett also like advocates for this index. It's good for people with no time. Yeah, definitely. Yes. Passive yeah. investors. Yeah. 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 So I guess it works for the footballer, And that's an advice that I think Kaden has said before. So right, I mean the the dollar dex. Yes. Yeah, one, yeah. yeah so dollar dex. Yes. 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 Free advertisement, <laughs> but we didn't get paid to say. It. No, but when I was looking at all of them, right, I, yeah. I had this impression that um, he's kind of had a good head start in the sense mm, where yeah. he had some money already. Yeah. Although although he, the money was dropping, right, but he had mm. some money in the sense yeah. he wasn't in debt. Mm. In, in the sense, mm. yeah. it's just that he didn't have the knowledge, or, right. or what what he himself said yeah. was, right, right. I don't have the knowledge. I don't know how to give yeah. my daughter and my wife a better life, yeah. La. yeah. Mm. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that's why I like the documentary because you know that the, the three things I mentioned are which is like some people maybe just need to save more, some people need to earn more, or you need to invest. Yeah. And the documentary, when at the end of it, when you look at it, it's teaching one person how to earn more money, which is yes. my like mentor. And then your mentor was like teaching the person how to save, and your mentor was teaching the person mm. how to invest. invest yeah. 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 yeah, so if you had looked at the Netflix documentary and instead of like binge night on Friday just watch it for the <laughs> sake of watching but you took notes and you studied it that's it like you're set lah financially yeah. you're set. And you just yeah. need to read a bit more try and understand and like yeah maybe you need more knowledge more yeah, investment yeah, knowledge yeah. okay like you definitely need more <laughs> investment knowledge lah for sure yeah the money is to help create the life that you really desire and that is your reward for taking care of it for those of you watching at home um, if any of you out there have some sort of uh, issues trying to save or find it difficult uh, to do so. Uh, the biggest tip that I learned from the show is to ask yourself the four questions, the one that Tiffany mentioned. All right, so do I need it? Do I love it? Do I like it? Do I want it? All right, so not just for your big ticket items like car or house or whatsoever, but even things like a uh, day-to-day coffee, like from Starbucks versus your kopi tiam, kopi si kosong, that kind of thing, for example. All right, because the difference over a month 
it, it, it does <coughs> add up. Right? So, so just something that you can start doing immediately from tomorrow on. Yeah. For those of you that watch the documentary and you feel you resonate with that bartender, you are probably not having that high a salary which you think you should have. And so the key takeaway is find a second income. And it can be as simple as taking your hobby and monetizing it, like market it, sell it, maybe open a Shopify shop. I think that's, mm. those things are quite easy nowadays. Sell your wares, sell your ideas, sell your tools and start a second income and that will help you in your financial mm. journey as well. So for me, I feel that I, uh, if you have some cash to spare, so it's good to invest in the S&P 500 index fund because like, history has shown that the S&P 500 uh, returns around 10% annually. Of course, like, it's better to have like uh, more investment knowledge before you jump into this. And that's it from us for, for this episode of The Market Talk. Now, if you enjoyed this version of The Market Talk where we actually had our first market, stay tuned for the next episode where we will be looking into the FIRE movement. F-I-R-E. Financial independence, retire early. Hit the like button and subscribe if you want to learn more. And uh, comment down below on the topics which you would like us to talk about more. And if you want to learn about investing the safe and easy way, then please join our WIA Masterclass. The link is in the description to get to know when it is. Take advantage now. And thank you for joining us. Bye. Bye.